All right, what's good, gang? We came to, to Hickey Gap. It's just gonna be a one night thing. I have a whole nother hike planned out towards Northeast Georgia, so stay tuned for that. But how I said, today we came to Hickey Gap. Pin drive is gonna be in the description. Been here before. Pretty short hike from the little campground, which I've never camped here, so we're gonna see how that goes. Hopefully it doesn't get too cold in the night. I'll show my setup and the gear I brought uh, later on. Right now we decided uh, we just got here. It's like 10 in the morning. We're gonna go ahead and go to the falls and check it out. Been here a couple times and all this place has from what I know. The camping ground, a little waterfall where you can actually swim, but the water's always cold. I've never been here even during the summer where it's warm. Keep that in mind if you come out here and swim. And it's just like a little hole where you can swim so it's not like anything big. You'll see later. Also, <laughs> My friends, they just spent like 40, 50 bucks all getting their fishing license and stuff, thinking we were gonna come fish down here. But apparently, talking to some guy who's been here a while says there's no fishing. So I guess keep that in mind. I don't know, maybe it's further down the uh, trail or uh, at a different spot. So if you do come to Hickey Gap, there's no fish. But yeah, getting down here is to keep in mind, you're gonna have to have like a truck or something, some, an off-road vehicle would be best. Cause you go down to gravel road for like four miles. And if you're riding in like a street vehicle, it's gonna take like 20 minutes. They brought a truck, we made it down like Five minutes. This trail, it's pretty good, it's pretty wide. It's a little bit more difficult than most just because the trails ain't flat. Roots and stuff sticking out. You go uphill and then downhill. At the end, you do have to be a little bit careful going down because it gets slippery, because it gets kind of next to the falls and then you gotta use rope to go like all the way down. A lot of people go through there so it's, it's really slippery. It's like a lot of mud. So you gotta keep that in mind. But other than that, it's a pretty short trail. It's a nice place. Uh, we got lucky. It's been raining. It rained yesterday, I think. So there's a bunch of water. The downside is I guess the firewood's pretty wet. So we do, we're gonna have to dry that out, which uh, just takes longer for it to burn. There'll be more on that. Once I get back to the campsite, I'll show you guys the setup. I'll give you guys some pro tips on what I've learned from camping out, which I've only done it like two or three times. I haven't really uh, done it much, but I bought a bunch of gear. So I'll, I'll show you guys that and uh, things I've learned to buy, things stuff not to buy. But other than that, we're in Murray County. I think it's Chatsworth, something like that. So uh, this is really close to uh, Dawn. If you guys have never heard of Hickey Gap, this is it. Um, it's pretty hard to find because when you type it up on the internet, it doesn't pop up as much. So I guess now this way you got the address and everything uh simple click away everything will be right there for you but yeah it's really scenic and how i said even coming out here during like summer the water's still pretty cold it's like always cold so not the best swimming place i mean it's pretty cool because you can swim next to the waterfall and like jump in there's some spots that you can try to jump in from pretty dangerous so you gotta make sure you like you know what you're doing if you are jumping off it because you'll see it doesn't have really like good spots to jump off from but i've seen people jump in and they have a, a little rope swing so you can jump in so that's pretty cool but other than that like i said it's like a big circle not too big but it's pretty little circle i guess a big little circle if that makes sense where you can swim so pretty much you just jump in and then come out so i mean it's it's still worth coming out here so just keep that in mind don't think you're going like to a big lake to swim or a big river like if you've ever been a blue hole that'll be coming during summer like blue hole is the river you want to swim at right now i just got to the part where it gets a little bit more congested everything's closer together keep that in mind if you're bringing out little kids dogs or whatever other than that it's pretty manageable it's not that bad just every now and then there's little spots where you you do have to be careful because it's easy to slip other than that this is just a little bit of the trail the rest of it's pretty well maintained and, and pretty wide enough to walk alongside people it's still good enough to like bring the dogs out here just make sure they're on the leash when you're walking on here so if they start to fall you can catch them it is it, it does get pretty steep and you're gonna land on rocks so it's not gonna be it's not gonna be fun it's not gonna be a soft landing either so if you're ever out here and you have trouble um figuring out which way to go and stuff the best uh tip i can give you is uh stay next to the creek it'll lead you right to it because there's other little trails that kind of lead you off a little bit more into the woods and i don't know you could like misinterpret a trail and what just walk into the woods so if you ever feel like you've gone too much into the woods, yeah, you went the wrong way. Stay close to the creek. Uh, there's a trail that stays right along it pretty much besides that one that makes you go up into the side. So uh, keep that in mind. If you go too deep into the woods, uh, just uh, try to backtrack towards the creek. Follow that trail all the way to the to the base of the falls. Just
world. As you guys can see there, I don't know how, how I talk like if I know the scoop or whatever. I've been here before. It's got uh, more than that one waterfall. I guess that's the main one. I guess that's the main attraction. But honestly, there's, there's something else that's hidden. It was that last little piece that I did. As you can see, it's like a big rock slide. You kind of have to work to get to it. We took some rundown trail on the left side if you're coming towards the falls. We kind of messed up though. It didn't really look like a trail, kind of did. But they were like really run down and it was really congested. Like it was really hard to uh, see the trail. But sometimes you got to make your own trail or whatever. Keep that in mind. Sometimes the best route is the road less traveled. I'm always acting like I know the uh, scoop about every place or whatever. But it's just I get too pumped when I show up. So I just start uh, talking or whatever. I thought it was just that main waterfall. Which before there's like a couple little ones. So it's, this place has like multiple waterfalls back to back pretty much. That main, that big one with the rope swing. It's pretty much the main attraction. Because that's what everybody knows about. We went ahead and crossed the little creek or whatever. And went alongside the left side. And that's the left side if you're coming from the campsite to the falls. It was pretty bad. It, it looked like a rundown trail. I wouldn't really recommend it unless like you know what you're doing out here. We went ahead and followed it for a little bit. Not much after that last um, rock slide waterfall type thing. It's what you get if you come all the way. That's going to be as far as we went. We're probably going to go a little bit upstream after we make it back to camp. The end site for us I guess would be after that big rock slide waterfall type thing. It looks like the creek, the creek bends and it gets like really narrow. That's where we called it and went ahead and came back up. Still out of shape. George over here skipping leg day. We decided to stay on the right side this time and go up the hill because it looks more open so it kind of looks like a better uh, trail which is kind of weird looks like they got rundown trails maybe it used to be a spot over here maybe they had camping back in the day but as of right now it's pretty overgrown but if you do guys get out here if you guys are well equipped and know what you're doing i'd recommend making your way past that main waterfall with the rope swing just a little bit longer down make sure you uh, stay as, as close as you can to the creek to get that last rock slide waterfall type thing other than that uh some creepy thing when we made it right to that last spot that we got to uh we actually found a machete so that's kind of trippy like what's it doing out here you know it's just like randomly staked into the ground but we're guessing that it was like maybe just someone came out and camped here or who knows how long it's been here which uh i guess it backs up that there used to be trails back here or it could be like a murder weapon and like we just messed up because we touched it or whatever as of right now how i said the right side looks like the better way to take it to make it back and to the to that last cinematic but the whole way there's like tiny little waterfalls and and like rock slides that are that look really good so um i really recommend this place as you can tell this is really the road less traveled so a pro tip on that to keep in mind while you're out here if you do get a little bit adventurous and go ahead and like try to make your own trail go a little bit more than the average hiker uh, make sure never split up that's like rule 101 because like it might seem a good idea to uh, split up to see who finds the perfect trail to make it back but it's better to stay together because you never know someone can twist an ankle someone can fall so you never really know so it's better to make sure you can see everyone to make sure everyone makes it back because the whole point is to come out here and like enjoy the beauty of nature and to make it back home so you can check out somewhere else there's no point in just coming out here and, and dying in one spot and not getting to see the rest of the world drive that into your brain rule 101 uh never split up out here we just made it back to that main waterfall i highly don't recommend you guys uh go out to the other one unless you're experienced and you know what you're doing right there is a prime example of why you don't go out there unless you're experienced like that whole terrain is really bad it's all slippery and way uphill so unless you're really experienced i wouldn't recommend going out there i mean it's worth it if you're experienced just be very careful maybe this will make people open up the trail since we found that down that way maybe this will motivate them to fix up a trail to make it easier to get up there like right there right when i make it all the way back throughout that whole thing uh nothing happened and then right as soon as i'm back to like the simple part i fall so if i fall in the simple part then you got to be careful out there and a pro tip on that is um if you do go ahead and think about um adventuring a little bit more and seeing uh stuff for yourself make sure you have ample time to make it in and out because like this 30 minute hike turned into like two hour hike so make sure if you're gonna take the road less traveled compensate time for it to make sure you can make it in and out safely because if you get dark and you're out there like it's game over right there keep that in mind right now we're probably gonna chill here a little bit enjoy it and then probably hike up towards the river and see if there's anything else think of it about it too Another Another pro tip if you're falling try to kind of roll into it don't just like go flat down don't go like dead weight down follow the momentum of the fall to lessen the impact because if not if you hit like straight rock on bone it's gonna hurt another pro tip on that probably a really important pro tip make sure you put like your phone and stuff down and really look at it with your own eyes if you really uh stand there take take a couple seconds and really look at it with like your own two eyes like it really shows you like like what earth's got to offer us you know that's really what drove me to come out here because i remember the first trail i ever went to with the disney trail that'll be uh 
I'll post that one soon. It's really little. That's why I haven't hit it. But that's a really good one for doll. And it's actually pretty cool that our city has that because it's a good lookout and it's pretty quick and it's actually a good leg workout. But um, going up there, the first time I've ever been hiking, I remember going up there and like I did all the all the typical stuff, put it on my social media or whatever. And uh, I was on my phone a lot. And then I just remember putting it down and I like, really looking out there and just seeing like the big, the big, well, they're probably not the biggest mountain, but uh, they're big to me because I guess I'm from a small town right now. And that's the biggest I've seen since California. But I remember looking out and being like, whoa, like, dude, we're like this small. Like, think about how much we have left to explore how much you haven't seen like when you think about it there's, there's so much mother earth has to like offer us so this is why i'm doing it too like get out there and see what's really out there because as of right now as you can tell i mean everything kind of looks the same but it's it's got its own little vibe or whatever so like i can't wait till hopefully down the line i'll be able to like check out new places different countries other states pretty much the whole world you know keep that in mind make sure you actually with your own eyes look where you're at look around look how different it is from what we're used to Tracks today. I went ahead and gonna go ahead and try a Ozark trail. So I did a little haul, I guess. So I'll show you guys what I bought. That right there was the tent. They got like good deals for the tents. It was on sale for 40 bucks, which is a deal for tents. You see Ozark trail has pretty decent prices for their stuff and it's uh, good and reliable. This one was 40 bucks and it fits four people comfortably. But yeah, you could probably fit even more. And then it's got LED lights inside, so that's cool. If you ever in need of anything, I would go to Walmart. They got uh, the Ozark trail stuff is good, good stuff, especially for beginners. If you try to get into it so like always i'm never prepared so i went ahead the night before pretty much last night i went to walmart and grabbed some gear pretty much the basics all you really need really don't need much i mostly bought pretty much flashlights and things to cut wood with pretty much that's the most important thing you need uh, when you're out here is make sure you have enough firewood pro tip on that if you think you have enough you need to double what you got because uh firewood burns quick which we got lucky here they had it cut for us i don't know if that was planned or if that was just like if they were cleaning the area or whatever so we got pretty lucky on that part I won't need this stuff for this trip it's gonna have other than that i just bought flashlights because it's gonna have multiple lights because if anything ever happens if you ever out there like in the woods like you took too long you underestimate it and you're stuck out there in the dark like pretty much it's game over there too so it's gonna have like multiple flashlights you might not bring enough batteries out here so it's gonna have more than one so if one runs out and that was pretty much it for what i got here oh and the knife i got a bunch of knives but this one looked really cool because it came with like a flint starter it's a can opener and some other stuff so i'm gonna check out all this stuff for the flashlights i bought the cheapest one and the uh, most expensive which one was at 100 lumens and the other one was at 300 so i'm gonna see which one's actually holds up because i actually have another one but i, I wanted to try this stuff you don't want to spend too much money and you just want to like try out stuff they got good quality stuff for uh good prices and you can get this all at walmart so like last minute it's perfect for what you need keep in mind everything i bought was 60 bucks for a knife a flashlight um a saw to cut the wood after you chop it down with the axe the cheap one and, and the most expensive in the store to see which one's better and see if they're actually worth a buying i just bought this just because of and that last video if you saw that snake how i told you i really do not like snakes it got to me so like i thought about it and i was like no like i need to have one of these i'd say it's a good investment because you never know and how you saw how perfectly blended it was in or camouflage i'm so afraid of them like i'm gonna have like everything to like, keep them away or like so if anything happens like honestly i'm gonna see if there's any like snake repellent necklace or something bracelet ankle bracelet anything honestly vest jacket honestly if someone invented that i would so buy that and this was all ozark equipment i'm thinking about buying a bunch of gear from different places and testing it out to see which is best so i can let you guys know because um that's another problem there's a bunch of expensive stuff out there cheaper stuff and you don't know what to get so this way I, it can help you out so you can save some money you can buy relatively cheap stuff that's good all these five things costed me about 50 bucks and it looks like good equipment and it's perfect for like last minute so if you're like me and you you don't plan life right and you try to do everything last minute like this this saved the day the saw kind of personal you really don't need it only if you want it because if you have a little axe or something to uh, cut wood with that's pretty much all you need i just brought this because from my experience going out there chopping down wood with an axe it's cool and all but then when you got to get it to little pieces you get tired of swinging trying to cut it down or whatever this really helps to just make it easier starting a fire you always need little twigs and stuff and smaller pieces of wood so this, this is 
the only reason I got this. You don't need it, but um, it's good to have. So everything's pretty sharp coming out of the box. And so the axe and the saw are like the duo if you want an easier life out here. But you always got to consider like how much you want to carry and the safetiness on them. The one thing I didn't like about the axe is it doesn't come with a, a safety cover for like the blade. That's the only thing negative that I've noticed out of this stuff. And then here's the light. It's pretty cool. It's rechargeable. This one was around like $22. The axe was probably $12, maybe $15, somewhere around there. The saw was probably the same, $12.15. The cheaper light, 100 lumens, was 6 bucks. The 300 lumens was $22. I think it might even work as portable charger. It's pretty bright. This one's a thousand, so I'll use it to compare the little headlamps. This is the cheap one, comes with batteries. The more expensive one comes with um, rechargeable. I personally like rechargeable stuff better. It'll be better if it comes with a battery you can extract, because those are way better, because you can just carry those extra batteries. And then I carry a portable charger on me for like headlamps and stuff and the camera another thing that's probably good to invest in a power bank i don't know if they have one i didn't see one at walmart but maybe checking the website they probably have one i'll probably as it goes along i'm not going to show you guys everything today because it probably make it too long i'll just show like i guess what i thought about i need that day or the different type of gear i guess if it comes up because honestly it's a lot to it you just gotta like plan it right make sure you got the essential food water somewhere to sleep and something to keep warm and then something to start a fire with should be pretty much it for the essentials but um it's pretty cool because it actually comes with the batteries like most stuff doesn't so this is the 22 versus the 6 one we'll see uh how they do later that was pretty much everything i got i'll get back to you guys on on how the gear worked out and if it's good So pretty much uh, going up the creek, once you get to that road again, you're gonna pass the road. You can keep going along the trail, but they're not really uh, well kept. Again, I only recommend you guys going alongside the creek upstream if you know what you're doing and you're comfortable being out here. Like the trails are really hard to follow and there's no real markers. Going up the trail, there's not a big waterfall like going down it because I guess that's the only like, that's the only main trail that, that's kept up. So keep that in mind if you come out here. But if you do go up, just hit the road. It's a good little hike with some scenic mini waterfalls, I guess, and little water slides. So you got that. After you go downstream, go ahead and come upstream and see what it's got to offer because it's worth it. That was pretty much it for this. I would only recommend going down till you hit that waterfall with the rope swing. And then if you're going upstream to just go till you hit the road. Because uh, after that it gets pretty um, complicated. You could get easily disoriented. And if you really don't know what you're doing then it's going to go bad real quick. We got to the road. We kept going up a little bit. But the trails got pretty hard and it's getting close to sunset. So we're turning around. Apparently, don't quote me on this or don't, don't take my word for it. But apparently, I think snakes come out when it gets a little bit cooler in the day. So you got to Keep that in mind and you especially don't want to be trapped out there in the dark we're just gonna go ahead go back to the camp we were actually searching for a fishing hole so we know it's not between the waterfall and the road so if you keep going or you know about it let me know so next time if i do ever come out here again life-saving pro tip for the night for the whole camping experience pack warm because you're gonna need it thermals are a big lifesaver if not you're, you're gonna be out here and it's gonna hurt you're gonna wake up in the morning you're gonna be waking up all night hoping you were home comfy in your bed and stuff this was the chattahoochee okanoe forest and this is only one part of it so i recommend you uh keep keep adventuring out here i'm gonna definitely visit back i know of one more spot that's close to here that I, i'm definitely gonna check out later on but if i find anything else I'll, I'll definitely come out this was a cool little place to vibe out that was it for this make sure um you tell me what you thought of this place tell me what i missed tell me about your experience when you came as always leave me with a new place to check out i'll definitely get to that and thanks for watching us